Today, we want to talk a little bit about uh, our, our track system and uh, track alignment. Uh, so what we've got behind us today is actually the road track version uh, of, our, of our Steiger tractor. And we want to understand some, some components to the undercarriage itself. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about track alignment. Uh, and, and so just so we have a better understanding of, of how simple this system is uh, to align. And, and how simple the system is uh, to use. So, as we begin, uh, let's understand that what we're standing in front of is actually a positive drive track system. Uh, that positive drive uh, comes to us uh, uh, by the uh, positive engagement of the drive lug uh, in relationship to the drive wheel. Other system components we'll point out today uh, are the idler wheels that we've got. We've got uh, idler wheels in the, in the rear and idler wheels in the front of the undercarriage. In the middle, we've got what we call roller wheels, and there's three roller wheel shafts in the middle. These are the general basic uh, uh, system components. When we start talking track alignment then, we talk about some other system components, one of which is what we refer to as a yoke plate. The yoke plate is secured and retained by six bolts, three on the rear and three on the front, and an adjustment bolt. So these are what we're going to be using uh, when we've determined that we need to try to align the tracks. In this system then, uh, uh, we start talking about doing track alignment runs. And it's uh, particularly important when we purchase a new tractor, if we're replacing uh, a new, uh, an older tractor with new tracks, if we're replacing that machine with new tracks, we want to be sure that we're conditioning the tracks. When we talk track conditioning, we're really trying to teach this track how to live its life within its undercarriage that it's mated to. So when we do alignment runs, um, we, need to, we need to think about some safety things uh, as well. Uh, but when we're doing alignment runs, we want to keep the tractor straight. We want to go a good distance. Um, if we talk, uh, you know, four or five hundred feet, we want to get a good run moving straight. We don't want to have any inputs that could otherwise influence how this track is moving within its undercarriage. What I mean by that is when we start our alignment run, we want to make sure that the tractor is going straight. We don't want to have steering inputs that could uh, otherwise tell this track how to wander inside that undercarriage. We want to know naturally how it's wandering. So when we come then to a stop, we want to coast to a stop. We don't want to put the brakes on because if we utilize the brakes, we could be then introducing some other influence into that undercarriage. So again, this is what's called the alignment run. And it's important that when we get done with the alignment run, when that tractor goes down to a stop, we want to put it in park and we want to shut the tractor off, okay? Once we've done that, we're going to come down to the undercarriage, okay? When we start talking track alignment, uh, one of the best indicators for track alignment uh, is going to be heat. Uh, heat uh, is usually generated uh, by friction. And that friction uh, can happen uh, due to the relationship of the drive lug, the idler, or the roller. But the biggest symptom we'll see is heat generation. So when we do alignment runs and we're trying to get a track aligned within its undercarriage properly, we're actually going to be coming down to the track. We're going to be putting our hand on the outside of this drive lug. Now, I'm pointing to this side of the drive lug. There's another side of this drive lug, which sits back here on the other side of, uh, uh, of the track. So we've got an outboard side and an inboard side. Those are the two temperatures that we're really comparing. When I talk temperature, a lot of times I get the question, well, how hot, how much temperature? And what I really try to underscore is the fact that what we're looking for is a temperature difference because that difference is going to tell us which direction that track needs to move within its undercarriage. Now let's talk a little bit about that alignment process. That alignment process is actually incorporating what we referred to earlier as the yoke plate and the adjustment bolt. In the scenario when we've determined that we've got heat buildup more on one side of the drive lug than the other, and for the sake of, uh, of what we're doing here, I'm putting my hands on the drive lugs today. We also incorporate the use of a temp gun, okay? So again, this is going to get us that finite number, okay? It's going to tell us exactly what the difference is, okay? So I would heavily implore anybody that's doing track alignment, having a track vehicle, this can be a very good 
um, uh, resource when it comes to understanding uh, what that undercarriage or what that track inside the undercarriage is doing. Okay. We need to keep in mind then too, I think it's worth pointing out, that we've got a couple tools back here on the toolbox. I grabbed the temp gun. But really when we talk about the simplicity of the alignment process within this undercarriage, we talk about having a couple wrenches, okay? The reason I want to point that out is that we've got uh, a 36 millimeter socket that's used here on the yoke plate bolts. We can use an impact wrench here, that's just fine. Don't ever use an impact wrench here on this turning of the adjustment bolt, okay? That's one word of caution. We want to make sure that we're using safe practices when it comes to the alignment process, okay? In this scenario then, where we've determined we've got more heat generated on this side of the drive lug versus the inboard part of the drive lug, let's talk about that alignment process, okay? If we've come to the determination then that we've got more heat on the outside than we do the inside, again, we talked about that heat being an indicator of friction. That friction could be coming in between the relationship of the idler and the drive lug. In that scenario, we really want to try to adjust that track away from the heat. In this scenario then, we want to uh, attempt to move this track so that it's moving inboard or toward the tractor. Now in that process, and it's pretty clearly defined and pretty easy, we make it pretty standard, so no matter which undercarriage you go to or which side of the tractor, the principle is the same. In this scenario, if we want to move that track inward or toward the tractor, we're going to loosen the yoke plate bolts here, the six of them, and again, we're using an impact wrench, and then we're going to come down here and we're going to turn that adjustment bolt, okay? We're doing that with a wrench. In that process, then, what we're trying effectively to do is to move this yoke plate rearward, okay? And in that process, we're actually moving that track more toward the inside of the undercarriage, okay? That's a general uh, way that we do the track alignment. Some important things to remember then uh, would be alignment runs are crucial. The beginning of the track's life is crucial, okay? We're teaching that track how to live. In that process, we do straight alignment runs. We don't influence that with steering inputs. We don't influence that with any braking, right? We coast down to a stop. Again, we talk from a safety perspective about putting the tractor in park turning the tractor off before you come down to the undercarriage, before we start to try to influence that undercarriage.